Well, today's video subject is this server power supply. We are going to fix it. It's broken. So let's not read this label and go ahead and under no circumstance is this case to be opened. Well, we don't care about that. It's already open. So, this is a really classic and old school switching power supply. I think it's a single switch forward converter, if I'm not mistaken. And what do you look when a switching power supply is broken? Capacitors. In fact, I already prepared two here because I already peeked inside. And here, exactly in this area, here are two capacitors. These two capacitors here, you can zoom there. The plug is in the way. We unplug it. There we go. You can see, well, not really. If you're not if you're not a person that knows electronic components, you cannot see it. But these capacitors there are belching. That means they have developed a high internal resistance. And that's the standby power supply, which basically gives power to all the control unit of the power supply. And if that draws a bit more power, it begins to develop a really high ripple in the voltage. And it doesn't like that, so it goes into error mode. So the power supply will only deliver a small amount of current of the original values. In this case, this power supply is designed for 5 volt 25 amps, 12 volt 16 amps, 3.3 volt 20 amps, 0.03 and so on and so forth. So we are going to I'm going to unscrew some more screws here on the heatsink here and remove the PCB. See you then. All right, I freed it from the case. Now we can take a better look. In fact, these two capacitors are not the only ones that are belging. Here, this one as well. This one will need to be replaced and this one here. This one doesn't look like it's bad, but I have a hunch it's bad because it's right here next to the heatsink. It already got cooked. So we are going to replace it anyway. Well, there is some basic stuff I'm going to show as well. Because these power supplies don't turn on simply like that. They have a standby mode and some error modes and so on and so forth. I already tinkered there's a second one I have. Because that's this power supply is the second one. I've repaired already on one. They took a very long time to basically hack the power supply so it turns on the high power supply that's inside because it's two it's the standby power supply and the high power power supply that's the two transformers this is the big one that's the high power supply this is the low power supply this even has a power factor correction circuitry here that's the inductor you can see there because it's a relatively high powerful power supply this basically makes that it draws a more linear current from mains. So now I will get to desolder the capacitors. Let's do that then. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. This one I've removed destructively, so we can't use that, that one as a reference. But this is what I use to test the capacitors. This is a ESR meter. So, to put it here so camera sees it better. This is basically a capacitive resistance meter. If we short the terminals, you can see it goes into the green. That's good. It means there is a low resistance. That's what we want. So, if we measure this capacitor, which is a good capacitor, you can see if I measure the terminals, goes into the green. Now we take this capacitor, which is a bad capacitor, going to measure it and, well, it's not really much, but you can see the difference. 
here it goes really into the green and this one eh, it goes so the yellow this one is not as bad as some other capacitors i've seen anyway but that's enough that the power supply loses a lot of power so we are going to replace them because if a capacitor is starting to belch it's really not a good a good sign so let me chase off the another two or three capacitors that are in there that are not good we'll be right back and as expected remember i said that i was suspicious about this capacitor it doesn't look belched or anything like that but if we turn this around and use the meter to measure it look what happens this is really bad it's not going to work like this you can see this should be like this and the capacitor is uh, it's really bad you can measure a good capacitor from this side if you try this one you can see it goes into the green so let's replace that okay after about one trillion hours of fiddling the capacitors inside of there i finally got it jeez that took forever this one here was really easy of course because it's right there that's why it says on the cover not user serviceable okay let me continue there is another one i need to get i hope that that's the last thing i'm going to do i didn't find anything bad than that then i'm going to put it back together and show you how to turn it on and so on and how it works okay another seven million years fiddling capacitors into place and i have it done now i got to test it but first before i put everything together i show you how i found out about how to turn this power supply on if you look here there is ground here right here it's labeled ground and p is on with me which means power supply on the funny thing is that's that's not the only thing you have to connect to ground well if you don't know that normally the standard is if you want to turn a power supply on you connect the p is on to ground so the, the p is on goes to this terminal the funny thing, there is a, another terminal here, the other side, this one. This one needs also to be connected to ground. I think that's the PS kill pin that kills the power supply if it's not connected to ground. That's the absolute safety pin, so if you remove it, it doesn't produce any voltage. So, I will do some modifications and let's see if it works. <laughs> 